Hi, welcome to Prophetic Utterance. I'm your host, Jacqueline King. It's a pleasure to be back. I'm in just to do a quick teaching on deliverance and maintaining deliverance. Amen. We just praise God and honor God for his mercies and his grace upon our lives. Amen. We just thank God for more grace, more mercies in the name of Jesus. We pray that deliverance will be your portion because deliverance is the children's bread. And one of the things uh, as a deliverance minister uh, for the past couple of days, I've just been wrestling with um, teaching deliverance and doing deliverance are two different things. Teaching deliverance is helping the person to understand why they should have deliverance. And not only that, you're not going to only have deliverance once. You're going to have it on multiple occasions. Because it's going to be a time in your life just like mine. You're going to fall back into sin. And you're going to be required to have deliverance. Just like me, I have multiple deliverance. Amen. To maintain my salvation. And in with that saying, it's about maintaining your deliverance. Remaining bro- break free. You know, Remaining free, enjoying your liberation, not getting tied up with other things that is not a part of the body of Christ. Amen. So the scripture I want to read is Hebrews chapter, uh, James chapter 5 verse 16. The words say, confess your thoughts one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Effectual fervent prayer. One that is always constantly in prayer. Amen. But the person who's praying is the one that's in righteous. Amen. And and their prayer is going to be consistent. And that's something people in general, I believe, should understand that you need to live this life of consistency when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart. Amen. With the heart, the heart is made righteous. Okay. With the mouth, the mouth is made unto salvation. That's what the word says in Romans chapter 10, verse 10. And as I had indicated in my previous teachings, the enemy has to honor Romans chapter 10, verse 8 through verse 9 and 10. He has to honor the word of God. He has to yield to the word of God. But if we're not submitting our will, our heart, our mind and body and soul unto the word, how do we expect change to remain? So that's something that's been on my mind, something that I have been thinking and I have been, you know, just meditating on on what God wants me to do when it comes down to a ministry. Amen. Now, I've always been in ministry. Ministry is not new for me, but ministry is growing. And there has to be some level of accountability for me and whomever I am ministering to. So one of the things I was thinking about today was doing a process, asking asking questions, doing assessment with people to really know if they really are committed to their salvation, if they really want to remain free and not be entangled with the affairs of the world. Amen. So my question to whoever's listening, are you ready to be consistent and faithful to your salvation, to your walk in Christ Jesus? Are you ready to go through the process? Amen. Are you ready to be real with yourself and with me and whomever? Amen. Are you willing to have people to help you? Amen. Because deliverance is a lot of work and it's about helping through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am the vessel that God uses. I mean, for me to help others to be set free. But I'm recognizing that it's going to require you to be in an environment that's going to support your decision because the backlash is real. If you don't have people in your environment that's going to help you to maintain your salvation, maintain your deliverance, It's going to be hard for you. So you have to be ready. Whoever you are, you have to be ready to work. Amen. Let's go to work. Let's put it in. Amen. 
faith without works is dead amen for a deeper walk and a deeper understanding and having a relationship with the father the son and the holy spirit requires work amen so are you ready to to have that change and maintain your change are you ready to walk in holiness speak holy holiness amen in every area of your life especially if you are seeking deliverance amen because deliverance is the children's bread deliverance is your portion my portion amen i know as a deliverance minister or before i became a deliverance minister it was a struggle amen it was a struggle finding a church that did ministry taught ministry and remain in ministry of deliverance amen you have to surround yourself around people who understands deliverance if you are still around lukewarm people and you have deliverance most likely you are going to fall back into the same traps that god has delivered you amen so it's more or less like the word of God said it would have been better for you to not have known the way of salvation (laughs) really it would have been better amen because the bondage will be worse it will be much worse seven times worse amen and God does not want you in that condition he wants you to acknowledge the sin in your life every day every day amen he wants you he wants me he wants all of us to acknowledge the sin that we have committed because if we don't acknowledge the sin this is where the enemy satan will continue to have an upper hand in our lives amen and we don't want him i don't want him to have an upper hand in your life nor in my life or any other person's life amen so let us be a hearer and a doer of the word of god let's make the word of god living and active in our lives according to the book the book of hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 through verse 13 let the word of god give you the boldness and the courage to live this life in righteousness and continue to speak those things that bring salvation and and so much more so much more of god's benefits into your life and and especially my life amen i love deliverance i love knowing people are free but it does grieve my heart when you see a person go through all of that deliverance may take an hour two three depending upon the condition of that person i mean but it does grieve my heart to see people i mean fall back into sin because they didn't have anywhere to go or any support i mean to maintain their deliverance and i'm telling you it's hard work as a deliverance minister but i know I'm not doing it on my own. I'm doing it with the help of the Holy Spirit through the mighty name of Jesus Christ. With the angels on board, I mean, going forth into the areas that I am unable to reach, I mean, to minister and counsel those who need counseling. So right now, I pray for a divine intervention on your behalf. I pray that you will understand what deliverance means to you, that you will begin to look at your environment. Can your environment help you to maintain your deliverance? Can your environment help you to continue to be faithful to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Faithful in prayer, faithful in fasting, faithful just in every area how to live this life righteously. The word righteous means in right standing. Can you do it? Can you remain honest to yourself and to others, including me? Or any other deliverance minister. Can you continue to work a deeper relationship to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? What are you ready to do? And this is a question that I want to put out there in the open. Because, you know, people, they get prayer, they get deliverance, but they don't maintain it. That's the point I'm making right now. They get prayer, they get deliverance. They get everything what God wants them to have, but they don't maintain. It's just like the children of Israel. They got out of bondage. Amen. They passed over. The death spirit passed over them because the death spirit saw the blood. That was their deliverance. The next you know, when it was all said and done, they were able to leave out of bondage. But they continued to have habitual behaviors that they had inherited from out of the land of bondage and i'm telling you whoever's listening you have to break those habitual behaviors that 
kept you in bondage deliverance is one thing but you got to look at your lifestyle you cannot continue to confess jesus christ as lord as savior and not make him a part of your behavior and that means your mindset i mean make him a part of your will a part of your your choices your decisions you know praying and asking questions communicating with him he's abba father he's adonai he's elohim he is more than a uh the god of all sufficiency the just god he's so much more but i really really want you to find that love that intimacy with father don't let anyone discourage you from deliverance and when you do receive your deliverance don't let nobody discourage you to walk away from your deliverance you got to remind yourself how that two hour journey of vomiting coughing up and doing all kind of expulsion for deliverance and then it takes another person another five ten minutes just to stop all of that bam do accusation do um reminding you of your past you got to remind the enemy within that person my past is covered in the blood of jesus christ see the blood that's it tell the enemy to see the blood the enemy wants you to walk away from your beliefs he doesn't want you to remain free he wants to continue to oppress you amen jesus did not die for this world for the sin of the world for you and I to continue to be oppressed. He wants you free. He wants me free and to remain free. He wants all of us to remain free. And I I just wanted to bring this to your attention because it's it's so important to know and to understand the heart of God, to understand what father did for you and for me for your family for your ancestors and your descendants amen father has done so much for us but we cannot allow the enemy satan to continue to rob us of the blessings that god has for us we can't continue to be ignorant of the devices of the enemy amen we have to be submissive to the will of the Father. And I just wanted to come on here and share that. And I'm rejoicing for those who are doing deliverance. But at the end of the day, I'm hoping that they will keep their deliverance. And don't let the enemy rob them. Don't let them come back in with false teaching. Um... Don't let them come back in by representing your problem, your past as an idol. And you start practicing idolatry because you're reminding yourself of your past and the things that has already been forgiven. That is satanic. That is the devil. And he will use anything and anyone. He will use our children, our husbands, our ex-wives, or whatever the circumstances, he would do so because we permit him to do so. Because everything has to be done by the our will as we permit amen so i just want to read this um closing prayer amen and just i want you to make some decisions to start closing the gates the portals the doors every entry point in your life and the only way you could do this is by forgiveness so start praying now and ask god to forgive you and anyone that has harmed you so that you can receive your freedom your healing and also receive the cleansing through the blood of jesus christ amen receive today because you have entitlement to receive from abba father you you are entitled to the promises amen that we inherited through faith amen because of our confession so I pray right now that you will allow the Spirit of the Lord to minister to you. That you will ask the Lord to release your angels to assist you, to aid you, to help you to walk upright before him. To bring back every area of your life. To bring back every piece of your soul. Amen. To bring it all back. To gather you back together again. To bring you back into wholeness and completeness. So that you will receive his promises according to the book of deuteronomy (laughs) chapter 30 verse 1 through verse 4 
I pray that you will believe and you shall receive. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I praise God and give God the honor for the power of restoration and wholeness. Amen. Not just for any area of the, what you would say, the financial part of it. Because that's not what it's about. It's about your soul. I, your soul will have the ability to bless the Lord at all times and bless him. I mean, your soul will rejoice in the name of the Lord because your soul recognizes what the Lord has done for you. When it comes down to your life, I mean, he he will cry out unto God. Your soul will bless him, I mean. And as you command your spirit in every area of your life, I mean, to come back together in the alignment of God's will for your life, you will be free. And not only that, freedom is not just about you. Freedom is for your entire home, your household, I mean. So every unclean spirit, every satanic ritual and word curse, anything that's filthiness, must go back to the dry places and never to return back into your house again. Back in your physical home and back in your body, your temple. Amen. Be free. Be free in the mighty name of Jesus. Be delivered. Be set free and remain free in the mighty name of Jesus. And take on your the robe of righteousness. Amen. Put on the garment of praise. Amen. Do what is right in the eyes of God. And I feel like I feel grieved because the spirit of the Lord is grieved. When you know the heart of God, you pray the heart of God. You speak the heart of God. And you feel what Father feels and you grieve. There's times as a minister I cry and my heart aches because my Father's heart is hurting. He's aching. And, 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 and you need to know the heart of the Father because when you begin to know the heart of the Father, you'll be willing to submit to what he has for you. Because what he has for you is for everyone that you come in contact with. So I pray that you will receive the healing. I pray that you will be released right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you will receive fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you will shut every door. Shut every window. Every portal. Every entry in the gate. Shut the gates. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. And let them be sealed with the Holy Ghost fire. The power of the Holy Ghost fire. Fire, fire, fire. The, the fire. Fire by fire. The lesser fire must bow in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want you and your household. I want you to be secured in the blood of Jesus. So that you will be able to walk in this new season of restoration. And receive continued healing. But just know your first round of deliverance. It's going to get sweeter and sweeter when you continue to do deliverance and remain deliverance. Amen. Remain delivered. And that's where I am in my heart. And I want to express that to each person. And if you're serious about deliverance, it's, it's, it's going to require work. Amen. Lots of work. And I'm your host, Jacqueline King, Prophetic Utterance. In Jesus' name.